Hey friends, Kevin Oosti here, after hours at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. Yes, uh, they allowed me to come back in late at night once again. So we're gonna take a little walk through the show, see some of the highlights. We can't share them all because we'd be here for a month, but uh, there's a lot of very special cars here and special displays. So let's take a look and see what we see, right? Uh, right off the bat, the uh, 427 factory-built Ford drag race truck, the F100 XL, a BFX truck, tow bar that they used to drag it to the racetracks with, something you don't expect, which is a hallmark of the muscle car and Corvette Nationals. But here is where one of the most significant displays of the show is this year. This, of course, being the 60th anniversary of the Pontiac GTO. So right in front, uh, we have a 1964 GTO. This is the one that kicked it all off, right? 389 tri-power. Uh, it's in a beautiful color. This thing is, uh, you know, known as one of the Bobcat GTOs, which of course was a product of Royal Pontiac, Royal Pontiac in uh, Detroit. The Royal Oak actually uh, was home of the Royal Pontiacs and the Royal Bobcats. And what we have here is a great display showing the birth of the Pontiac Ram Air induction system. So you see this bathtub style air cleaner sitting on top of the three deuce carburetor set up on top of the 389. This basically shows how they thought, similar to what Chevrolet was doing with the Z11 race cars, if they grabbed fresh air from up in here, they could feed the carburetors ramming air down the throat, right? So this was the prototype concept right there, which eventually went into production uh, later on, but known as the Ram Air. So this is the, the very beginning of the Ram Air Pontiac from 64. Um, these Royal Pontiacs had lots of uh, cool accessories and stickers and fun stuff, uh, performance parts. Here's some of the part numbers, the gaskets they used and uh, spark plugs and stuff. So it was a very cool display, theme display, showing a Royal Bobcat GTO. And you can see the badging on this one. Right there, legendary ride. But being the 60th anniversary of the GTO, there's far more than just that. Uh, this was one of the featured unveilings today, a 65 Pontiac GTO. Beautiful black color with the red pinstripe. This is uh, another four-speed car, convertible, and just an icon, right? Proving we're after hours, we got our maintenance crew that's gonna do a little cleanup here tonight. I'm not gonna get in the way of what they're doing. Uh, the 66 over here is a very cool car, special order, 66 GTO. Uh, this one is interesting, the, the VIN, the last three numbers of the VIN are 389, right? It's meant to be, like a 389 engine under the hood. Let's look at a few more. The Nafel Pontiac Tin Indian. I remember building the model kit of this one, right? Sponsored by AMT. Famous drag car out of Akron, Ohio. Another 66 GTO gold 67 Pontiac GT. I mean, just GTOs for days. This fantastic 68 Ram Air 2 car. The Ray Faro 69, another Ram Air car. But then we get into the judges, right? And, and so what's a Pontiac GTO judge? Well, the GTO judge, and we got a whole bunch of them here. We've got on this side of the aisle and over here on this side. I believe this is, you know, one of the most amazing GTO judge displays that has ever been put together because these are all Ram Air 4 cars. And Ram Air 4 is, uh, you know, high performance, open port, heavy breathing Pontiac 400. But the, the judge originally was interesting because the GTO was back in 64, like, like that one, was kind of a lightweight, basic, muscle car. It didn't have a lot of options. It was just big engine, you know, two doors, go fast. But over time, the GTO became a little more fancy and you could get more options in it and more luxurious. So the Judge was actually a lower line initially 
GTO. Now this is a 70 GTO Ram Air 4 convertible. A whole bunch of 70 cars here. Uh, but you'll see things like no trim rings on the wheels and uh, fewer options than, than you would get because again, kind of the, the racy version. Towards the end of the line, 71, the judge started to pick up some more options and become a little more special. Uh, but Ram Air 4 cars are rare. There's so many of them here and it blows your mind to see it. There's a 71 455 HO, that's the big uh, round port head. So if you like GTOs, especially this style, this is definitely the place to go. 72. Uh, but the GTO celebration doesn't end there. We got some later model GTOs. And throughout the 70s, Pontiac continued to keep the GTO alive. Uh, this one here is a 1974. Looks very much like a Nova. Uh, but still, a GTO. Uh, we got into this one here. This is a 73 colonnade style. And capping this little area off with a 70 GTO Judge Ram Air 3 convertible. So this is not a NAT display because it's not a Ram Air 4. But here's our friend Q-Ball. Hey, uh, hey! After hours shooting cars? After hours shooting cars, that's right. right Come on. on down to the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals every year. That's right, all the time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Uh, so, we got to see the GTO display, which is, uh, again, super special. Love to see it. Uh, but the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals is friend to all different muscle cars. And right here is a 69 and 68 Buick GS Stage 1 display. So these cars are, you know, Buick luxury, but with the stage one engine. And some of these convertibles are really impressive. Earlier today, we uh, unveiled this one. Adam Martin restored it. 69 stage one, four speed convertible. Mike Sopka's car. And this one, white, black, low miles, but clean restoration. Check out, I don't know if you can see it, but the four speed does not have a console in this one because it has an eight track player. And the eight track and the console didn't get along. They didn't fit. So you got one or the other. Uh, but Buick Muscle, uh, the stage one, of course, higher lift camshaft, uh, carburetor, you know, some good performance goodies, special designation on the hood. I love that hood design. A 69 GS400 in green. Beautiful color with uh, kind of a greenish tan interior. I don't even know what color that is. Kind of hard to see. But the hits keep coming on the GS400s all throughout the display. This one is amazing. So this is a GS400 non stage one car, but still uh, definitely worth a look all the way down the line. Now back here, we'll get into some more very cool Buicks, a GNX Invitational. The GNX, of course, was the hopped up version of the Buick Grand National, 547 produced. Uh, these things had a special intercooler uh, and uh, different wheels and slightly different tuning and I might say a cam change over the regular Grand National. And this was the fastest car you could buy in 1987. This particular one is the prototype. It's number one of the GNXs. So the whole lineage started here from our friends at Buick. This diagram shows some of the unique pieces of the prototype. Where else are you going to see it? You yeah, know, right here. Uh, the fun thing about this is that this car belongs to the Conley family who also owned the 70 Buick GSX known as the prototype, actually the factory show car that we've shown here with the special wing uh, that was featured at this show a couple years ago. So, love to see him. Uh, as we move on, a Chrysler 300 display. Uh, unbelievable Chrysler 300F. Look at the color, just blows my mind. So this is, you know, not traditional muscle, but yeah, full-size, high-performance, 
Hemi cars, Royal Lancer convertible. Look at this badge. Crazy. There's our our jouster. Uh, 59 Dodge Custom Royal Lancer. The detail on the interior on these things, the design, this is, you know, that 50s opulence. Look at that. Look at that trim. I believe this was a, a Virgil Exner design. And then it, for 60, they cleaned it up a little bit with almost a Packard style uh, taillight. And then we got into this 58 DeSoto Fire Sweep convertible. Similar family. Luxury muscle from DeSoto in 58. So this show, full of surprises, not just Camaros, not just Mustangs. Some pretty cool 50s cars as well. So we've got a lot of ground to cover here. Uh, we're gonna go back in the middle of the room over here. Of course, our friends at Meekum are the title sponsor again. We appreciate them for, uh, for joining the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. They're previewing a few vehicles that are gonna be for sale at the January Kissimmee Meekum auction in Florida. But what I wanna see is a close-up look at a few more of our featured unveilings here at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. Uh, this one is pretty interesting, the 66 Le Mans convertible. Doesn't look like your typical Le Mans. It's got a GTO for an end on it. It's entire old blue. It's got a white interior, white top. It's a 389 or a 400, I'm sorry, probably 400 with a power glide in it. Here's your Le Mans treatment on the back. And it was kind of a custom built by, uh, uh, by the owner and the restorer who wanted to make a version of the car they wanted using all GM parts. So it's a custom using factory parts, but they blended different options and things that kind of went together to build the car they wanted. Uh, right over here, 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner 426 Hemi. Super awesome car, uh, restored by Apex. Uh, you'll notice that it's a Hemi car, but it, it's got a blackout hood delete and it's got a black vinyl top, but a white interior. Stunning. Bench seat, four speed, 426 Hemi. Minimal graphics on this one. Your Roadrunner stripe on the back. Just an amazing looking car. Again, a featured restoration unveiling here at the 24 show. But take a look at this. This one, holy mazzoli, 1971 Hemi Cuda, 426 Hemi, four speed, B5 blue, white interior with a white billboard stripe, pistol grip four speed, of course the shaker hood, just a stunning, stunning looking car. I could look at this thing all day. Another one restored by Apex, they did a great job on it. And we had a great discussion today about this car because uh, a lot of times you'll see B5 Blue done and it's a lighter, a little darker, a little more vivid, a little more sparkly. It was real challenging to get an accurate color because a lot of the paint technology has changed so much you just don't see it anymore. But I think these guys got it right. It's uh, not one of the high impact colors, B5. It's a kind of a regular color, but still just a beautiful and amazing car. Got some more Mopar muscle over here. Our friends at Magnum Auto Restoration brought out a, a 71 Demon 340. It's 71. You know, you got the two scoops on the hood. But check out the orange and red plaid interior. Crazy. Uh, this Superbird got a lot of notoriety because this car had a little misfortune. To, a couple years ago, this is the Hurricane Bird, right? So this one, you've seen the picture on social media. This car flipped upside down, unfortunately, after a hurricane. But it has been restored and brought back to its glory. We got a picture of it there. Oh yeah, that's a bummer. 
but I went from that back to what it's supposed to look like. So happy to see these cars restored and uh, preserved. Our friends at Nikki Chevrolet in Chicago, they always bring cool stuff out. Nikki, one of the original high performance dealers, speed parts dealers. Uh, they found this Jack Douglas Yanko, uh, you know, barn find. The same family has owned it since 1981. You can see the crazy lacquer paint job on it. And some clear checking, you know, of course, big block under the hood. This thing was run hard, raced hard. Look at the, the heritage here. Street Machine Nationals, DuCoin, Illinois. 91, 90, 88, 96, 93. So even then, they were showing this car and getting it out there. A little <laughs> custom Roadrunner, you know, Wile E. Coyote mural on the side. The Highway Star. Yanko, very cool. One of the more modern Nikki Performance Camaro ZL1s. Super Camaro, this is number three. With all of the Nikki Performance upgrades. And then uh, a showpiece for the Nikki Gasser kit. Solid axle conversion for tri fives. You know, you can build your own. Just call our friends at Nikki. So, couple more featured unveiling cars. This 71 GTO Judge, this is restored by Level 1 Restorations. Uh, it's a Ram Air 3 car, I believe. Uh, beautiful, amazing color. Actually, it's a 455 HO car. I could tell because of the cue card here on the wing, right? And I unveiled this car today. I should have remembered that. See a lot of cars here at the McCacken Show. This one, a 1973 Formula 455 Super Duty car. The color is called Ascot Silver. It's almost a champagne. Uh, black interior, coupled with the four speed manual transmission. So these Super Duties were special cars. Uh, the 455 had uh, dry sump oiling capability, uh, provisions on the, on the pan, uh, made great power even for 1973 you know, pushing 400 horsepower. Not many of these cars made, fewer survive. I don't know, I don't remember what the actual production number was. Um, 170 some, if I'm not mistaken, not many in this color, but uh, fresh restoration by level one. And then we go on to one more awesome Pontiac, a 69 Ram Air 4, four speed, Firebird, Orbit Orange, and this one was a factory Pontiac show car that they brought to the likes of the Chicago Auto Show or the Detroit Auto Show back then, and it was a public show car where people would come to the new, new car auto show and see what's new from Pontiac, and they showed them this Ram Air 4 car. Four speed again, you know, vinyl top, hood tack, bright orange color to attract attention to people and uh, earlier today we talked with the a gentleman who's who owned this car from 1976 until recently and he basically bought it on a used car lot nobody really knew what it was until they started to do some research on it but at ram air 4 400 four speed 69 firebirds are not very common very cool to see it and uh, the 69 hearst olds convertible and this one, uh, you know, there was three of these that were built back in the day and used by Hearst uh, to go to the racetracks with the platform on the back. Uh, one of them was unveiled here. Linda Vaughn was here, you know, the giant shifter whole thing. There's one of the brothers collection. This is the third one. Uh, first one, I guess, burned down. The last two remain, and this is one of them. Special, special car. Uh, next up, we have some uh, movie stars. Yes, vehicles actually owned and, and from the Joe Dirt movie. <laughs> they got a hammy in it. That's right, had to say it. Uh, we also have a couple more movie star cars. 
this one here, the 55 Chevy 210, featured in two-lane blacktop. So this was the car that uh, James Taylor drove in the movie. This is the actual car. And the other 55 featured here is from American Graffiti uh, that Harrison Ford drove, actual cars. So yeah, you're getting a, a little taste of what's going on here because there's a lot. And we've only scratched, barely sc <laughs> scratched the surface of the 2024 Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. We'll keep going. This 442 featuring the W43 V8. The W43, what's that? Well, the experimental W43 Hemi Olds V8. There's a great story on what this engine is and how it got here and the parts that are new on it based on the original Oldsmobile drawings. Uh, I would look at these photos here. So these are from back in the day from Carcraft magazine. And you could see the large valve covers and the way the webbing is inside the block, the decanted push rods. This car deserves far more research and I'm gonna give it right here right now, but a shining star here at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. One of the hottest W machines possible, but not truly a production engine. Experimental, super cool. Uh, all right, so many cars, so many cars. A couple of more that uh, are standouts. This 1964 GTO build is what might be the highest option 64 GTO ever made. There are things on this car like uh, power seats, driver side power seat, uh, rear defroster, uh, the fender mount mirror. Take a look at that. That's a, that's a Pontiac piece mounted all the way up the fender. Um, he's got power windows in this car, all kinds of stuff. The owners had this thing for 50 years and uh, finally finished restoring it with Midwest Muscle Car Restoration. Brought it out to share with us here at McCacken, right? So many, a couple more premium unveilings earlier today. A 59 Chevy Corvette featuring the ramjet fuel injection. Uh, this one is a 290 horse uh, with a four speed, beautiful car. The owner drove this thing quite often and actually experienced a fire on Las Vegas Boulevard with uh, the wiring harness. Fortunately, the whole car didn't burn, uh, but it warranted a restoration, and that's what we see today. Uh, the interior is stellar, just a great looking car. And it's parked next to a 1971 Corvette ZR2. We heard of the ZR1, what's the ZR2? Well, the ZR2 for 71 is one of 12 featuring the LS6 454, 425 horsepower, right? So we all know the LS6 Chevelle, made 450 horsepower, but this ZL2 in a 71 uh, made 425 because it was a slightly reduced compression for 1971, but uh, a very, very amazing car. So a big block car designed to be a, basically a race car for the street, similar to the L88, uh, but not quite as radical. So didn't have any options, manual steering. Uh, and this particular car, after being sold new, went to England and uh, spent some time in England, got kind of worse for the wear, came back to US, got restored. And uh, here we are, one of 12. Supposed to be the, the best handling big block of this generation Corvette, I believe it, but a little too much for regular street use. A lot of people that uh, got behind the wheel of these things got beat up pretty good because no power accessories, just, just a neat car, right? So a whole slew of additional Corvettes. These are some of our triple diamond entries. Uh, 63, the big tanker, uh, another 64. All these are uh, big tank cars, which meant they carried more fuel for longer duration racing. And uh, it goes on and on. So Corvette Central's here as a sponsor with a lot of Corvette parts and restoration pieces. Uh, nice to see them. Uh, very cool display over here from the pure stock drag racing guys. These are cars that, uh, you know, they might look fairly stock, but 
are a lot faster and, and <laughs> employ interpretations of rules and uh, are raced and driven hard. So not everything here is a, a pure show car. Uh, a lot of these cars are still driven. Uh, Hodge Restorations brought out a, a trio of, of Mopars, some Hemi cars. This one here being the Pilot 426 Hemi Roadrunner, crazy car. Has a few different things than the regular production versions. Pilot cars, of course, were the first one down the line to uh, test out the manufacturing procedures. So cool to see those. Always a little different, 69 Camaro Pace car. 57 Chevrolet convertible. And this one is unique. This is a Toyota Crown. A Toyota Crown? That's right. A very unusual car. It's a 1971. But back in the day, you know, Toyota was trying to compete with American sports cars, performance cars, muscle cars, and, and this was their entry. It is left-hand drive, so it's U.S. federal. Not something you see every day, but very interesting car. Uh, which brings us around to uh, a display that's familiar to our viewers. This is our V8 Speed and Resto 20th anniversary display. We've touched on this a few times. Uh, up in the front is the chassis for the 1957 Ford two-door ranch wagon that we're working on. Uh, these are cars all built in our shop. Uh, this features a John Kazi 540 inch single overhead cam, fuel injected aluminum V8, making 840 horsepower on a Roadster shop chassis with a 4L80E automatic overdrive transmission. Uh, the 1967 Pontiac GTO we restored back in 2019, uh, previous McCacken uh, placer for sure. This 1969 Corvette Roadster that uh, we've been building, 427 uh, Tremec TKX, five-speed manual transmission, the reloaded Camaro came back, 490 roller, big block, Detroit speed, automatic car, overdrive, the loose change Camaro with the LSA. These we featured in depth in a very recent shop tour. You can look that up on our website or on YouTube, the Comp Cam's 1969 Camaro and uh, the 1965 Chevelle that we restored back in 2010. Still looking good. So cool to see those. We're very happy with the response. A lot of people came by to say hello and check these out. So we will continue on because you can see more of these. Like I said, on our YouTube channel, and we invite you to check them out. So much more. A huge Boss Mustang display, Mach 1s. This one here is up on the rack to get inspected for the vintage certification. Uh, the Pinnacle certification. A 73 Mach 1, 72 Mustang, 71 Super Cobra Jet 429 car, and this is uh, also a pilot car. It just keeps going, you know, this 1970 Mach 1 428 Cobra Jet car with the Ram Air Scoop. So Mustang fans were not let down, Boss 429 leading the charge at the top of the display. Uh, a bunch of some junior, junior dragsters, full-size drag race cars, and they're leading into the factory lightweight display. And this one is a display of factory-built drag race cars that have lightened features. So maybe the bumpers are aluminum, maybe the fenders are fiberglass, or fenders are aluminum. Uh, 1964 Dodge with the race Hemi. Look at this thing, man. Gutted interiors, right? 63 and a half Ford Galaxy with the uh, 427 FE motor. These have aluminum bumpers. You can see the shimmer on that. It doesn't look like chrome, because it's not. And uh, fiberglass body parts. Um, again, seats out of a Ford van, no radio, no heater, all the deletes, no sound deadener, just a four speed and a 427, and lightweight parts wherever they can. But next to it, 
1962 Ford Galaxy Lightweight. And if I remember the story correctly, I think they made 11 of these. Not many of them exist anymore because some of them were converted from 62s into 1963s because the 62 drag program, it, it took a while to make these and they knew the 63 season was coming up. So they're like, hey, we'll just flip some of these into those. Uh, but the 62, again, lightweight panels, completely gutted interior. Uh, we did a feature on one of these in the Brothers collection that didn't have the bench seat. It had uh, buckets, but again, the four speed heater, radio delete, 405 horse, but these, we're a 406 FEV8, aluminum bumper, fiberglass body panels, super rare. Tempest lightweight wagon, another great Pontiac drag car. Uh, Z11 Chevrolet Impala, another lightweight car. Look at all these lightweight cars. A lot of people didn't know that they built these things, but the lighter you can get them, the faster they went. It's like free horsepower, right? Problem with them is parts are impossible to find because they were purpose made uh, just for these cars. So they put warnings on them like hands off, my hood's aluminum, you know, my fenders are aluminum. You lean on them, you'll dent them, mush them all up. We don't want that. Great display. Very cool to be able to spend some time here. Look at the aluminum bumpers on this one 64 Dodge 330. Dig the wild striping on the open headers. You know, headers were white back in the day. A lot of these race cars, uh, they thought it helped with heat. It looks cool. Just goes on and on. Across here, of course, uh, a Mopar A12 anniversary invitational. The A12, of course, uh, Super B six pack carburation lift off hood. Special steel wheels, uh, gear ratio, 440 under the hood. Again, kind of a lightweight car. Beautiful and green. And here's a whole slew of A12 cars. They came in a couple different body styles. So that's a 69 and a half. You can tell it's got a different quarter scoop than the 69. This one's in hemi orange. Over here. A 69 and a half Dodge Super B, A12, six pack lift off, 440. Just a great display. Very high performance cars. People love to see them. Fast, lightweight cars with that lift off hood. More and more stuff to see, friends. The bunch of black Mopars that came out. Dig this 70 Sport Fury GT with a 440. Big car, high performance luxury from Mopar. 71 Cuda, 446 pack. Here's another 71 Cuda, 446 pack. This is an unrestored original car. Just beautiful. I'm a huge 71 fan. The 71, of course, had this grill with the individual openings and the, the gills on the on the fender and the little power bulge hood i dig it the black and white formal attire invitational it's kind of a black tie affair of muscle cars right even a wing car <laughs> it's great uh, so much right javelins a lot of AMC love here at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. Uh, we've got some more Mopars back there. All the way in the back is where some of the vintage certification is happening on the lift. Uh, the Studebaker Legends. And this thing, 1933 Studebaker Special Indy 500 race car. Amazing it still exists. But then backed up with a 57 Stude Golden Hawk. A 61 Studebaker Hawk. Uh, the 64 Stude Gran Turismo and an Avanti. Even a wagon, it just goes down the line. We have a lot more Corvettes back here. We're going to make our way across to the uh, barn finds and hidden gems section, which is always a cool place to uh, 
to see cars that have been discovered or dragged out of storage from some barn or some field. More triple diamond Corvettes. You know, Corvette is the middle name of the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. Whole slew of mid-year 427 cars. And uh, here's a beautiful silver 63 split window. Wearing original paint, red gut. Look at that, look at that. People try to recreate this kind of patina today. You know, that's just a nice, well-worn, comfortable pair of shoes kind of split window Corvette. Really, really dig it. Uh, the show, it really just doesn't end. You need more than a, an afternoon or a quick walkthrough on video to consume the muscle car and Corvette Nationals. Here we are, the barn finds and hidden gems. We gotta make sure we don't disturb our other fellow late night photographers. But uh, the quick rundown over here has muscle cars of all flavors. Superbird wing cars, Daytonas, Chargers, Challengers, Super Bs, RTs. This one in particular is a very cool Hemi Cuda. It's 1970. Just wild. And we'll see. You know, sometimes we find these cars here that are brought out of the barn and displayed dirty, and then they get restored and they're here next year wearing clean paint and looking all new again. We'll find out. We will find out. So, the more we walk, the more we find. But uh, I think I might start to wrap this up a little bit. I, I hope you have enjoyed our fairly quick walkthrough of the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. Um, this is an event that uh, if you've never been here, you need to come. And again, it's great for the whole family. There's awesome cars to see, but it's really all about the people. And this is the 15th year of this show, and I've been to every one except two, I think. And every year I come back and they seem to raise the bar and come up with more and more cool stuff like this. 70 GS 455, stage one car in blue. Buckets, automatic. I dig the Buicks, but I digress. Uh, always something cool to see. You need to come to the event. Uh, MCACN.com, get your tickets for next year, and you'll end up seeing awesome cars and, and meeting some great people and uh, reconnecting with old friends and making new ones. So I think that's about it for me right now. Be sure to follow the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals social media pages for more photographs and videos. Click like and subscribe and all that jazz for more from us at VATV and Muscle Car of the Week. And uh, from all of our friends here at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals in Chicago, I'm Kevin Oosty signing off. See you next time.